So here's the deal, you're happily live streaming on YouTube when all of a sudden your stream completely crashes. Now while you can't fix this on the live show, what you can do is use the YouTube video editor to fix it for folks watching on the replay. So in this video, I'm going to show you how. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today. Now, if you've ever ended up looking like this poor sucker on a live stream and you want to make sure that future replay viewers don't have to deal with that, well, we're going to show you how to do it. We can actually use the trim function here in the YouTube video editor to actually take out that whole section. So let's jump in and show you how now. Step one is to go to the YouTube Creator Studio. So to get there, we click in the top right here on the logo of your channel and then click on YouTube Studio. Now to get to your content, you wanna click on the content button and this does work on your uploaded videos, but it's a little more handy on your live videos. So let's click on live. And here you can see all of the live videos I have upcoming and all of the ones available on live replay. Now the one we're gonna target is this one down here, Home Studio Q&A number 64, where my connection dropped out. So to edit this, first we click on the details button here next to the video. And now we come over to the left and click on editor. And here you can see we have a timeline here with all of this entire video. It goes for 56 and a bit minutes. And there's our audio. If we scroll down here, you'll see that we also have ad breaks. We can blur parts of videos and we can even add in additional elements like cards if you are going to do that on your YouTube videos. In this one, we're just focusing on trimming. Now, the other thing to keep in mind is if you don't see any of this stuff, if you just see your video with no audio and nothing else, it means it hasn't processed yet. It normally takes around one to two hours, depending on the length of your video. So you may just need to wait until it's finished processing if you're not seeing all of these options here. But once you see these, you're ready to start editing. Now you can clearly see the trouble point here because we've got this spot here where the audio goes away. So if we click here, we can come in and actually play this. And this is the spot where everything goes wrong. That have better pitch shifting mics. So I know there we go. We've gone away and we're just frozen there. For some reason it did that. But yeah, I sat there for, uh, yeah, around about 20 seconds by the looks of it, 30 seconds. And then when we get to this section, if we click down here, let's try to play that. Here I come Are we back. back? Are we back here? I think we're back. So yeah, so what I need to do is I need to find a good cut point at the end here where I'm not sort of starting to say something and then come in here and find the point where we want to restart this and then I'll show you how we can use the trim option here to fix this up. So I'll go away and find the points and then I'll come back and show you how. So I've found the spot here where I want to put this edit in. So if we hit play here, shift it down with the vocal transformer. So you can hear it's almost, it's starting to glitch there and it's gonna go away. So that's the point where I wanna actually trim this out. So what I need to do is tap on the trim button here, just above to the top left. And then you can see here, we've got a couple of options. We can either trim the start or the end of the video. And we will do that as well. I'll show you how to trim off the start because when you start to go live, sometimes you wanna remove that. But what we want here is the split option. So because I've already lined up my playhead, I can just hit split and see how it's created a split down here. Now, what we wanna do is zoom back in so we can actually see the point at which we want to bring this back. So I'll zoom to about that level, and then what I can do is line my playhead up with where I want it to come back. So that's the point where I want it to go out. I just say a few other things and then it freezes. In fact, we'll just zoom out one more notch there, and then we'll come back to here, and let's find the point where we wanna come back in here. Play that. Are we back? Are we back here? I think we're back. <laughs> yeah, it, it totally froze up at this end. So let's just uh, uh, we'll do a quick snap for a cue for an edit point. There you go. That's from my editing days where you need to have like a click or a snap or something to show that. So what I can do there, I know now that this is where I actually come back in and I say this. That was interesting, wasn't it? <laughs> so that's where we'll go. So that's the point that we want to go to. So we'll just line our playhead up there. We'll zoom back out. And now all we need to do is grab this handle and see what happens. See how we've got that X and it's graying out all this section. So we can bring this and line it up. We can zoom back in with our zoom here and find exactly the point that we want to go to. So right there. Now, if we zoom back out and we play this section, we can actually preview what this is going to be like now without that little interruption. Uh, and you needed to get the guitar and, and uh, pitch shift it down with the vocal transformer. That was interesting, wasn't it? Now, I did tell you that we were... 
So not perfect, yeah, but a heck of a lot better than your viewer having to sit there and watch 30 seconds of silence and nothing. So we've now done this. Before we actually hit save, because that's all we really need to do, we can hit preview and then hit save, but I also want to trim off the front. So this is pretty common. You may want to trim the front or the back. Now, you don't need to use split for this. All you need to do is actually grab this handle. So what I need to do is find the point over here on the left where I actually start the show, and normally I give myself a little break. So it looks like it might be here around that seven-minute mark. Let's, uh, let's take a little bit of a look and listen here these ones get a better audio quality that was actually just another little little issue there so we've got lots of them in this video so but, but we will be removing that i think this might be the spot there it is yeah so there's the start of the show so all we need to do now is zoom back out grab our trim handle and this time we're trimming off the front so we're just going to pop that right about there we're going to zoom back in and just make sure that we line this up exactly where we want it so yep we've got it just there before that first beat of my intro and now if we just click out here and hit the play button we'll see exactly how this is going to start for folks watching on the replay Cool, we hit the pause button, let's just zoom back out to see the work that we've done here. There we go. There's our start point, we've trimmed off the seven minutes of me just getting set up, we've trimmed out this 30 seconds of the, the video that we don't want there. What we now need to do is hit the preview button here, so we're going to click on preview, and it's going to sort of cement it in there, and then the final thing is to actually hit the save button. Now you can actually do this and save it as a new video, so if you want to keep your live stream there, save it as a new video, and then release that version as an edit, then you can do that. I I just saved the original one. Now keep in mind, the one thing to keep in mind here is you will lose the live chat replay. So if having folks being able to see the live chat replay is important to you, then don't use this method. But what I tend to do is leave it there in its full version for about 24 hours and then come back and do this. And that way folks who want to see the live show in all its glory with all the comments can actually do that. And those who don't will actually get that nice streamlined experience. So all that's left to do is hit the save button. You get all of this information, which is all of the stuff I just said, and we can hit save and that is it. Now it's gonna go away and Process. This processing takes anywhere from an hour to sometimes up to a day. Depends on the length of the stream, depends on how much stuff's going on at YouTube at the time, but you don't need to do anything. You can just leave this alone and then eventually it will get updated. One final thing that I'll let you know about is if you've got timestamps in your video, this will obviously change those. So if you've already timestamped your video, you will need to go back in and change it. I tend to, again, wait until I've done this final edit process before I go back and do my timestamps. There you go, a quick and simple way to fix any of those issues that you've had in a live stream. And again, you can use this on any of your YouTube videos by using that YouTube video editor. It makes the replay experience for your viewers just that much better. Thanks for watching. If you've got questions or comments about this or anything else, drop them down below and I'll see you on the next video.